Right, uh, morning ladies and gents, hope you can hear me. Um, obviously, I've uh, had a little bit of time this week. I say it's been about a day and a half to modify this pair of trousers. Same format, I'll show you the trousers. If you've got an interest and you want to go away and either make or mod a pair, I've done a little tutorial after this. I know some guys on Facebook, so I did a very short video. I've already seen the trousers. So I took a standard pair of uh, work trousers, Dickie's work trousers, took all the pockets off, all the accoutrements, and I un unstitched the inside of the crotch all the way around. So the trousers were flat and I could get them on the same machine. This is how I like to have a pair of uh, outdoors bushcrafting trousers. Um, and like I say, I've got one pair. This is like another pair I've made. Um, so I'll just quickly take you through them, okay? Um, it's still got the normal pockets that are there, though I don't tend to keep much in there because I don't even think like, too much around my ghoulies. But as we say, I've sewn pockets on. This is 1,000 Kodora, Dinia Kodora nylon. And uh, that's how I have it. Um, and inside a pocket, there is a pocket inside a pocket, okay? Again, shown better. Everything will be shown in detail in the tutorial. That, strangely enough, just takes me a uh, tobacco pouch. Again, loads of rooms in there, and again the other one, it's got a few bits in there, and that's just off my knee, so it doesn't affect me when I'm bending down. And strangely enough, the inner pocket there just fits my uh, dog and bone, or cell phone to the Americans. Again, nice bit of a <coughs> velcro to close it. Now, from the top, as we come in here, everywhere I go. There's thorns, rose bushes, and all that type of stuff. So what I've done, ladies and gents, all the way around, I've sewed a 500 denier. So that's about a half the tensile strength for that, more than enough to protect me from the thorns. And you see this bit from here to here, always done it on trousers, because even coming in here this morning, there's some dew and wet grass. It doesn't wet me trousers, then it goes down my socks. Okay, so I always do that. Um, and inside of here, on the green, I love the old uh, different colours. Um, just like it. Um, thousand Kadir and I like got what to make the Bergens out of um, and as I go to bend down um, that gives me knee protection because inside there is a piece of uh, roll mat uh, as in sleep mat and I cut it out and slot it in and sewed it all the way around and again upgrading from the last trousers the, this, this area here especially when I'm sitting down um, takes a lot of wear and uh, again we're doing stuff on our on our laps and so forth um, I've actually just the same 500 denier Kadora Nylon. Hopefully, it's showing up there. And I've just done uh, sewn it up there to give me a little bit of protection as we walk through there. I wasn't bothered by thorns or anything like that, straight through. Um, and as we turn around to the rear, there is um, again Kadora Nylon. Uh, I love your black and green just to make sure I don't get a wet bum or splinters as I sit down or something like that. They will give me a modicum of protection. I always use again a belt I make keep my kegs up and I think uh, Lee did a, uh, a brilliant, I made him one cent in one of these, he actually hung off a tree just using the belt so if you don't think that could do a nylon and velcro is a good closure system it can support somebody's, he literally put a carabiner up and hang off a, a tree branch with this. Uh, just set the back there, I'm not show you, I uh, unstitch it a bit, put some elastic in there so it just You've got a little bellows effects on the back of your trousers, uh, so you don't get what I call builder's bum and the old wind going down the Khyber Pass. So that means that, because if you're outside and you're losing calories all the time, you are going to get a bit thinner. It'll always keep these trousers tight on me, whether I've got a belt on or not. So ladies and gents, um, I say trousers cost me about 20 quid. The Kodora Nylon, probably a metre of, you know, the black and the green combined. So let's just say the very top end, sort of 30 quid, 27, 30 quid. Well, I haven't sort of priced it up. But for me, I can't make these for people because, one, it's not something a beginner would do, um, and it probably took me, you know, like a day and a bit doing it. But they're, they're mine, that's how I like my trousers, and, you know, and I, I wear these trousers more than anything. I even take these out when I'm walking the dogs, because um, I've got long grass all around me, and again, I don't come back with sort of wet bottom of the trousers, and then my socks get wet, even if you've got Gore-Tex boots on, that, that that's, um, it stops you from doing that. But, yeah, I just want to keep this bit... Um, loads of people throughout the time have asked me, oh, where would you get them kegs and that? I don't get them from anywhere. I mod the pair of trousers, starting from, a, you know, a decent, these are going to be heavyweight ones, um, obviously, for the winter. So, ladies and gents, 
if you want to see how these are made in more detail uh, and again I've been asked so I've done it it's not a problem um, the old how to videos do seem really really popular and people taking a lot of interest you know um, as I say I seem to be uh, turning a lot of tubers into sewer uppers I've just made up that word which is cool because I've saved myself a lot of money um, and I can't buy these trousers so you know tight wood style I've got a brilliant pair of trousers here 30 quid job done if you want to know how I did it, ladies and gents, please continue watching. If not, cheers. Thanks a lot. Right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, part two of uh, Mac Tights Wads uh, Mac Expedition or Mac Expedition uh, trousers. Um, really appreciate. Obviously, if you're watching this, uh, you want to know how I went about making a pair of trousers for not a great deal of money. I like many people that watch my videos ain't got um, you know thousands of sovereigns to spend on some like posh top end trousers. Uh, I like to make things to my own design anyway. So uh, one, thank you very much for uh, watching this part of it. And uh, obviously I really, really do appreciate the time you take to watch my videos and, and you know, put the co uh, comments in. So ladies and gents, uh, what I'm gonna do, you've seen them obviously made and me wearing them. This is how I've gone about it. And again, my thought train, everything's uh, an evol and evolving. These are the, well, including the ones I, well, two I give away, the third set of trousers. Um, okay. So you buy yourself a pair of trousers that you know fit you, um, always get them a little bit bigger, uh, at least one or two inches because in case you grow into them and uh, as I say they don't need to be terribly expensive. These were £20 trousers and it cost me a fiver on these for the uh, actually 500 Cadora nylon. Um, I've got a few little uh, design changes I want to make, only minor, but basically uh, I wear these more than anything, even at times when I'm just slipping them on, when it's a rainy day, like it is today, uh, outside walking my dogs. I, many, many moons ago, um, found out that this part of your trouser gets wet, you've got your Gore-Tex boots, your socks over the top of your boots, the water track, get, your trousers get wet, your socks get wet, and inside of your boots get wet, damp and clammy. So, uh, and everywhere I go, um, there, there is like um, thorns and, and, and rose bushes and stuff like that, all digging you. These give me quite a bit of protection, so I just march straight through them, as opposed to it sticking in my leg, if I only had, the, you know, the, the, the polycotton material. Um, so these are the old ones. I'm gonna obviously have that, wouldn't be without it. Again, I put my knee pads in there. I'll be showing you that as we go along. I like to have um, my pockets, um, and I'm going to go back now and have a pocket inside a pocket that will become apparent as we go along but the main thing is if you, as I unstitch the pockets that are on there I move them up just below that pocket so when I put my hand in my pocket my, my um, I was not actually bending down okay my fingers come to the bottom of that pocket without me sort of bending down or tilting sideways obviously saves on your back and it's just where it is it also lifts that pocket off well off the knee I don't know if you watch some of the military trousers that's what I used to find a pain anything bulky in the pocket when you went to go down into the knee lean or prone position um, it start interfering with your, the movement of your knee um, obviously and I like to have on the back um, some protection obviously uh, for my bottom and obviously it does to a certain extent uh, if you're just sitting down for a short pause save you getting wet patches on your bum again this was all 500 denier Cordura and Ireland and I've still got some of this um, I've already done a, a, a film on you know the simple belt that you can make that's incredibly strong um, and the only other thing I'm going to really do because everything's evolving is if, as you can see here there's slight little bits of um, uh, fluffy stuff that normally when, when, when I wash them only, only when I wash them because I just I never turned it over the hem um, just need to sort of um, take off there's one there I don't know if it's showing up but literally what I will be doing this time is learning from that is literally turn every single hem over like I've done here that become I'll show you uh, more apparent as we go so ladies and gents what I've done is taken a uh, pair of uh, already tough trousers these are Dickies work trousers I'm just going to come back and see how, how much of that is in shot yeah um, you can see the Dickies work trousers um, make sure they fit me uh, more than long enough um, so here comes the first or the most difficult part and just give us a sec well right, that's better because we can see a, a little bit more close up in detail standard pair of work trousers like I say these are dickies I like the dark green colour um, it takes an evening so ladies and gents that's why I'm doing this how-to video I haven't got the time lots of people say oh can you make me this all 
I just literally haven't got the time um, to do it or to be making them or selling them. So uh, it's proof popular. Um, people have come, to, you know, I've come to be noted by that. Is uh, showing how how I did it, so you can either do it yourself, become a sewer upper, or um, you know, uh, once you get to know somebody with a sewing machine, they can look at the video and have a very good idea how you can make a pair of trousers that suit you and to your design. First thing you've got to do, and it's, uh, you know, I sat there last night watching YouTube videos doing it, is unpick your stitching. Now, here we will see, okay, I've left a few bits on there. That's the side pocket, and I always find it's too near the knee, okay? So, with a stitch cutter, I don't think they're actually that brilliant myself, but they are useful for some things. A little stitch ripper. But what I use and, and carefully use because this is a, a Swan Norton surgical blade, really, really sharp. Is just go round, pick out one or two stitches, and when you can get underneath, pull your stitching apart and quite simply just cut away your stitching all the way along. Be careful, be very careful because what you don't want to do is cut the trousers that you know you want to remain. So, um, with one or two, and I'll not do it here because I'll muck it up. I'll, I'll, uh, I've just unpicked uh, the side pocket so far. I'm going to put this away in its little cover. Just give me a sec. I say these are very sharp, but excellent for um, un unpicking stuff. So that's it, you know, that's going to be off now. So I've got almost a, a completely clean pair of trousers. And as we've seen, there's two back pockets. I don't go with back pockets. Uh, anything you've got in your money, you either sit down or you fall down, bosh. You can, you know, injure, perhaps, uh, you know, your pelvis and so forth. So uh, as, as you see, there's two of them that had the the flaps over um, I'm going to be just taking all them off so in the end you end up with a just a blank pair of trousers after that so these things because this is a tube yeah and you can put that on a sewing machine like that and sew anything across it but you can't sew something down it okay um, I had the un idea um, of because it was presented to me as a challenge uh, to make a pair of trousers uh, less than the old Folk Raven and Nevin ones and you know various other um, companies who make expensive trousers uh, which was then if you see the inside seam let's do it that way right so it's not the outside seam it's your inside seam that, that's that one there and you see these work trousers they've actually got a little pocket where you could put putting the protection in there not sure if I'm going to take that off because that's a separate piece which I'll show you in a minute but literally turn it inside out unpick that seam all the way around and then ensure you've got to keep checking ladies and gents um, do the inside seam and you undo it here's one blue peter style I've prepared earlier and again once I finish this um, I'm going to take the last few pockets off that, which were left on there as a little demo um, is unpick the other leg which is still in a tube uh, and that, that way that is now flat if you imagine there's the sewing machine there's, there's the needle you can now put that on I can sew down it like that and across it like that and that's how I'm going to sew the various patches the knee um, protection on the bum protection and stuff like that and make a few other slight improvements on these trousers not really sure what colours I use, I've got um, black, I, I actually think black will go really nicely with these, uh, black and cream, finest that colours ever seen and I've got uh, obviously black material and uh, a green like that um, and uh, some very light green, Thousand Cadora and Ireland so um, anyway, obviously the, these ones quite strangely, well not, not for work trousers, had a little knife or hammer pocket on the other side and I, I've just taken it all off so ladies and gents, um, I better get cracking on these. Right ladies and gents, uh, done a little bit more work, took all them pockets off, um, split the whole of the inside um, leg all the way around the crutch, uh, so the both legs now um, are completely separate like this one, and you can easily work on them. That's the back of the trousers, and this is the front. Now because these are work trousers, uh, nice idea, um, and for those that you wanted, even if you're just going to upgrade your trousers, it has a separate piece of material sewn on here. This is not that far. I'm going to move it up slightly uh, to fit my knee, but where you can push like a, a knee pad in there. I'm thinking I don't need this piece of material here. And because it's going through a lot of the stitching, um, may make it hard for me to sew what I want in. So literally, I'm going to unstitch this. Um, 
and again I've done one side to show you that's how it was and that's how I've unstitched it okay um, what I will say now is while I've been doing this I've taken that pocket off which was a side pocket nothing wrong with that um, and I've got this piece of material and a few more bits what I'm going to do is uh, I'll do it separately um, some very basic modifications to a field craft shirt um, I'll give you an example one I quite like I bought it at the uh, military mark bushcraft show cost me two pound fifty um, let's see what I can do with that then just to upgrade the pockets and carrying capacity of your, your you know your bushcraft shirt but yeah keep hold of these bits um, it's gonna turn into another project so yeah it's up to you you could leave that if you wanted but all I've done on that leg and I wish I had a penny for every time I've turned these trousers inside out and the right way around so you're now looking at that's the back of the trousers and this is the front of the trousers so I've just got one continuous piece of material now all the way down and again so you can see it on the camera I'll just mark it excuse me <coughs> that's where um, I am unstitched uh, that piece of material that's where it come from and uh, yeah I'm going to use that for another little project they've got in mind so yeah just one piece of material um, there's where the pocket was and it's a good time now to go around I'll, I'll try and bring you in close give us a sec we're right, unpicking stitching um, you can as you can see the line of stitching there this is the piece of material I want to keep try and put your blade or the stitch cutter underneath there but there's always a danger that you're going to cut this piece of material so basically ladies and gents so I'll just have to keep coming back making sure I'm in shot you can see the lines of stitching I just quite simply pick a few of them All right, so you've got to be very careful what you're doing because you don't want to destroy the material Come on, each side. and then Go and make sure I'm in shot. You can pull that stitching apart now. I can put my little finger underneath there. And as I do that, then as you pull it, just don't pull it too much, but you can see each stitch, and it's very, very easy to just hold oh, to get my fingers out of the way and be safe with the blade. But just cut as you pull it, you see a stitch, give it a little cut see another stitch just keep pulling it and cutting pulling it and cutting and on the other one there's two two rows of stitches there hopefully if it gets bigger you'll be able to see it so really all I'm attaching is the actual piece of cotton and not the material either side because I don't really want to cut that because um, it'll be a pain again open my shot and I pull it apart I can see the cotton and I just attack the cotton it's two rows of cottons pull it a little bit every now and again you'll, you'll give it a, a tug and a load will come off which is good but very little danger of me cutting the piece of material where you can see I've done a little white mark just to make sure that shows up on the camera Hopefully, as you see, you pull down, you can see the stitches. Literally, just do that. The easiest and safest way to do a bit of unstitching. If you've never done it before, well, that's why I've. Because um, with any pair of trousers, if you want to make them or modern, you've probably got to deconstruct them, like I have done with these. So it's coming away nicely. And the, the sharp bit of the blade's no, not at any time touching that bottom bit of cotton. Make sure I'm in shot. Right, give it a little tug. Cotton's exposed. Carefully nip underneath. Give it a little tug. And then she's all the way. Cut 
the more bits on I've done that you can do it quite quickly but slowly at first ladies and gents to sort of get used to the mechanics of it and when we hit this part this is going to be the difficult part now again making sure it's come off to there I'm now going to do the same with that to unpick which will be the outside seam and uh, same along the other side so you know I'm going to go away and do that now and probably watch a YouTube film while I'm doing it Right, good morning ladies and gents. Uh, I had people drop round last night as you know, such as life didn't get as much of the cakes done as I wanted to. Um, all right, here we go. Um, here we see now, I've used some black 500 denier. Okay, that means it's about half the size um, or half the strength or thickness and weight of um, like 1000 denier, obviously 500 denier. Um, but I think that's more than adequate um, for the bottom of the trousers. Now here you see the top and this is the bottom, okay? Um, I've marked it across where I want to do. The old Taylor's chalk, absolutely brilliant kit. Um, and you can't have any patterns for this. You've got to literally lay your trousers down as flat as possible, mark it off where you need it, where you want it. And as you can see, I've double sewed it around here and I've um, hemmed it, so there's no frayed edges as we talked about earlier on. Okay, and I sewed it across there. Now you've got to try and make it get um, straight across. Bearing in mind, there's nothing at a right angle on these trousers, so it's a little, you know, just keep trying it until you get it. Ideally, this point here needs to be exactly the same height from the bottom of the trousers as this point here, because it's quite easy to sew your legging on at an angle if you, if you don't watch what you're doing. Um, I've sewed it, once I got it across there and I was happy, I then made sure it was flat as possible, okay, and then I sewed down, you know, the, the seam, okay, then obviously I've gone down each edge, each edge, and again making sure I've got it, both pieces of material as flat as possible. So I'll turn it over now, I want to keep this as short as possible, here we see the inside, loads of threads all over the place, we don't worry about that, okay, so, um, what I've done here, and you'll notice I've left it a lot longer than it needs to be, because I will then, once I sew, sew it up, it will literally come up to about there on the inside, I would imagine. There's my stitch line. So, obviously, these are designed to give you protection from thorns, which, you know, I always encounter when I go out, and they keep the bottom of your trousers dry. Um, you know, even when you're walking through the wet, wet grass, as we were talking about um, earlier on, you know, your trousers get wet it's yucky and it, it can be just for the day like today beautiful sunshine uh, but the grass is still soaking wet from last night's rain um, but yeah so you want it to go underneath on the inside um, so this if you just had it like there this part will still get wet so that's the idea and just leaving um, at least sort of a couple of three inches there's about two and a half nearly three inches there overlap and that will be on the inside of the trousers because when these are sewn up and I will cut this bit off. Just need to show you how I, I came about it. And when I put them together, we will see that they're almost, well they are, because uh, it takes a little bit of time, perfect just to sew down that seam together when I actually sew up what I will call the inside of the crotch seam. What I'm now going to do, as you'll see here, I've, uh, before I put them on, I marked exactly where my knee was, the top of my knee and the bottom of my knee, and uh, the actual knee pad is gonna go in this area here. Now what I've decided to do is do that in a, uh, oh, I've got some here, the green. So I, I, I do like the contrasting colors, uh, and this is 1,000 denier um, Bergen material, what they make the army Bergens out of. Um, not too heavy, it's only a small piece, and inside there you'll see I'm going to put a piece of um, foam sleep mat, just to give me knees some protection. Okay, it's not heavy, it doesn't wear against the inside of your knee, and put, quite frankly I wouldn't be without them. Uh, it's quite simple to do, um, mark it off round there, sew it, leave the top open, put your pad in, sew it across the top. So that, that'll be the next thing I'm going to do, and uh, yeah, I quite like the actual, so eventually, because I'm going to do the pockets out of this as well. So yeah, loving that so far. All right, bring it back, ladies and gents. All right, ladies and gents, uh, a little bit more work done there. Uh, very happy with this, yeah, going with the light green. Love the contrast, black and green. Um, my knee pads now. Now, it's quite important that you measure up from where your knee is, because you decide where this knee pad goes. On the original trousers, there was a bit of material there, 
but I found I wanted it just slightly lower than that, so I've built it in there. This is 1000 Cordura nylon, okay? I've sewed it on all the way down, but not across, okay? Because in, in here, now I've tested this out, you use what you want, but this is a piece of roll mat. Um, you know, you can get them from Argos, from, you know, Tesco's and uh, anywhere on the high street, but uh, I've uh, cut that out. And as you can see, it's a little bit narrow as it goes down, because the trouser leg narrows as it goes down. Okay, and uh, that will be slipped inside of there. Push right to the bottom, that's quite important to get it right to the bottom. There we go. Because uh, now what I'll do is, I'll sew that across there, but this is the thing that's going to be taking pressure. You've got pressure on the stitches either side every time we bend down. So I've gone back to like the Gutterman um, polyester cotton, which is what you know I make the pouches out and so forth, um, just to give that. So I sewed it round just to get it, and you can see the various chalk marks, just making sure that it went exactly where I wanted it to. And then I've done a very very small tight zigzag stitch over it just to really reinforce it. And uh, I'm doing one side, and I'll show you. Oh, a bit minging because well, let's just make sure I'm in sure. Yes, I am. Again, both exactly the same size, and again tapering down towards the bottom of the leg. Remember, you don't want it up against that seam, and remember that's it. That's the seam that I'm going to rejoin. That is the inside leg seam, and inside there, I've sewed it along the top. You can see I now have. Um, a piece of foam matting sealed in there I've used the other trousers and that's exactly what I put inside the actual what I call my knee protection um, and it's well I've worn them trousers every time I've been out and they've been washed hunting times and that's the foam matting there survived all the washings so there you, there you go ladies and gents that's the old um, um, knee protection done next thing I want to turn my attention to is getting the side pockets done now when I do side pockets if you imagine I'm wearing these trousers I'll just yeah there's the top of the pocket which I'll pull out of the way I want the bottom of my side pouch or side pocket to be right come right to the bottom of my fingers um, when I put my hand in it so I'm not constantly bending all the time no reason why I can't just have it exactly where I want it and uh, yeah I think the pocket's going to be about as big as that one there okay so there's going to be another one that's going to be sewed Remember, over the side seam, and that's what I want to get on to next, ladies and gents. Take care.